It's the Songcast, where real people speak that real shit on real topics every day. And I go by the name of Steve. Whoa. And I'm Ariel. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. And you know what I'm saying? It's been a while, but we're back. We're back. And it's been a lot of things that's been going on, a lot of the changes that we've been trying to make. Um, as you can see, our background and everything, we're trying to get everything together. So, you know, be bear with us while we in our transition process and everything. But um, we just want to say we appreciate everybody for saying all the kind words that you guys say when you guys see us and, you know, wanting us to start it back up and everything. We've been doing our best, but I think we're at a point where we can get it going and it be consistent. What do you think, Stephen? Yeah, it'll be coming through more consistently. Um, we'll be doing more doing instead of, you know, talking. You know, we're not going to promise too much because we're going to actually show y'all, you, you know? So we glad to take y'all on this with the rest of this journey for the rest of the year, you know, we're gonna come we we'll come through with some heat. We got some things in store for y'all. And you know, it just you know, since we're back in at it, let's let's just get let's just get it popping. Let's just get, yeah, it let's get into it. Okay, so the it. first thing Fuck. we were gonna do is basically say like what have we been doing and yeah, what's been, been going at? on. So where hmm. we been? You wanna start with me? We've been around the world and back again. <laughs> nah, it feels like it, but yeah, we made a uh, a city to city change. You know, we we, we kind of picked up and moved on the idea that we had, and then we took a road trip and stayed. <laughs> so, <laughs> it wasn't that, it wasn't that. In reality, though, we, we planned it out. We said, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go, and we thought of two places, you know, we thought of Dallas and we thought of uh, Charlotte. Um, Errol already went to Charlotte, so she said, uh, you know, so then I was like, I mentioned Dallas. And she was like, you know what? You know, that's a good idea. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea. So, like, you know, something different and something new. And um, so far, we've been loving it. So, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and in Dallas, um, there are better opportunities at traveling and things like that. Like, you can get to places a little bit more easier. Um, and so, like, the places that we want to go to network and things like that, they're way closer to Dallas and they're very much, like, more cost efficient to get there. So, um, with the sawcast and with our businesses in general, we try to do things where we want to do things out of pocket, the lean way. Um, we don't want to like accumulate too much debt. <laughs> we don't want to owe people and stuff like that. So whatever we got to do to make sure that we can afford to push our dreams along with live the lifestyle that we want, that's what we're going to do. So that's exactly where, why we moved here, the big reason why we moved here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, let's just let's just get into it, you know? Let's might as well, it. might as well. So, y'all already know in the Sawcast we do current events. So, this week we're doing the current events. I believe we have seven current events. So, we want to go ahead and get through them. We don't want to get out here too long. Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Number one, Ja Morant. And this is what everybody's been talking Where about. Where is Ja? So, Ja Morant made a video. He was in um, Denver. Well, I don't know if he was in Denver, but I know he was in Colorado. And he made a video with him in the strip club with his friends. And he was flashing a gun and everything. And um, like a few days later, I don't know if it was the next day or a few days later, after all the backlash, he released a statement and said he would apologize to the organization, his family, his friends, everybody who supported him and things like that. Um, so my question to you guys at home just to have a discussion and to Stephen of course is do you think that um he's putting on a show like do you think that that's really who he is should he stop doing that you know why do you what what, what do you why do you where do you think that came from like where do you think that stems from Whoa. when people do things like that because John Moore is not the person. first or last person who's going to do stuff like that. Like, I, we know people as in the black community who think, do things like that, who aren't, who we believe it aren't, is, aren't from that type of background. So, yeah. Well, he's embracing the culture mm -hmm. and in a way that a lot of people embrace the culture. And one of the things that I was thinking about is, it's kind of, I guess you could say, I don't want to say a double standard, but kind of viewed differently because mm -hmm. there's rap artists that do similar things yeah but because it's a part of their profession then it's looked at differently so he's supposed to be more of a professional because he plays in a different sport because he plays in a different lane mm -hmm. he's an actual athlete you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying instead mm -hmm. of they're both in entertainment but we i think we hold the athletes to uh, more of a professional standard than we do the entertainers because mm -hmm. the entertainers get more leniency but with that being said 
you know your profession. You know what I'm saying? So I do believe that he's in, he's embracing the culture, but at the same time, he has to know how to do it. And the way he's doing it is is, is kind of dumb. Not, not even going to lie. Like it, it's like, bro, you got all this bread. You signed a million dollar contracts. It's like at, at, at some point, you got to you gotta know, even if you're going to do it, just don't record it. Like you right, don't have to record yeah. it. You have nothing to prove. You're one of the you're you're one of the top um, NBA players in the league right now. Currently, most one of the most talked about. That's what I'm saying. One of the most electrifying. One of the you know funnest to watch. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, it's cool that he did step back. You know, and and then just just took a break because I think sometimes that fame gets to your head when 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 you get up yeah. there and and then. You just want to do what's cool and what's popping. And since you can afford to do all of the stuff you want to do, I think he's just experimenting around. It's just okay. the fact that I don't know, because I know um, it's been said that he's uh, threw up certain ga a certain gang sign or, or whatnot. I don't know if he's a gang member. Yeah, I don't know if he's a gang member or not. You know what I'm saying? Is he one? Is he not? You know, it is... Uh, you know, people didn't people questioning because his background. Um, they trying to say he's the Clarence, and Clarence's parents had a real good marriage. So it's like, I you know, I, I don't know. You know, what I'm saying maybe oh maybe they got to that point at some point in time in their life, and he still remembers the old days. I, I can't speak and attest to that, but what I can attest to is the professionalism that you have to hold yourself yeah, to when you are viewed in such a way. Yeah. When you have now, if it's somebody else that's not on that on that platform that he that he has, it's not the it's not the star player of a team. We might not even be talking about this. Yeah. But since you're one of the top players, since you're a, one of the um, youngest faces in the league with the that that are most talented, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of people looking at you, and there's a lot of judgment that's going to be on you. So I think this was a reality check for him. Like, all right. You did a little something, you really ain't doing shit for real, but posting. Motherfuckers do this shit all the time. But since you're a professional, you have yeah. to do things a little differently. So what I what I think is, it's great that he took a break. But do you think he really going to change? I mean, you think he going to change? I think that, um, yeah, I think that he's definitely going to change. You know, eventually he's 23 years old and he... I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying in the near future. I'm saying in the near future. Yeah, I think he's going to change future. for sure because at the end of the day, like once once people get to him and start to talk to him and let him understand that he's in a position that not too many 23 year olds were ever in their entire life be able to be in, um, he's going to understand that what he's doing is not right. And then also, um, there are a lot of people who don't um, who who do think who do things like this in real life where. They are they are um, they are raised with two parent household. They are raised their parents don't raise them to be like this, but they end up going a different route. And a lot of times they go that route because they are in some type of depression. They're going through some type of mental issues, and that's one thing that he did say um, was that you know he wants to step back because of those type of things because of mental issues and stress like that, and that's what's causing him to act out. And I believe that. A lot of people who do who come from those type of backgrounds like job but then go and try to be you know something different from what we believe to them to be this because of stress and like that and a lot of a, a lot of what is being said about him is that he's a villain um, he's um, he's aggressive <laughs> um, he talks shit and all this shit so if that's what you know you guys are saying that he is and he's trying to play into that and then you know he's 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 playing into that and letting that stress and all that that backlash get to him, and then he's acting out. And I feel like that's just what's going on. And he's 23 years old. Not saying he's a child, but I'm saying that he is young, and that should be taken into into consideration because he has a lot of people talking about him. A lot of people saying, um, a lot of people who giving their views and things like that. And he probably don't have a real stable base, you know, what I'm saying to go back home to. Because I'm always going to say this on my on the podcast, on the softcast. Um, the players who don't really have these issues are players that have went, like wives and children at home at that time. And they're 
professional that's career. What you mean by stable base. Yeah, because like I feel like man. he's a single so man. He's just freely making he's decisions. Just freely making decisions. He's, probably, he's probably taking care of everybody in his family. So he feels like probably some of the shit that they say, he they can't tell him shit because they ain't never been in the position that he's been in, which is true. So other people who have can talk to him and let him help him understand, which I feel like is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like he doesn't have a stable stable situation i feel like to to like go back to and like you know to get his mind where it needs to be make sure his mind is focused you know what i'm saying so this is a 23 year old everybody's talking crazy about him everybody's talking down on him everybody's making him feel like he's just a bad guy he's a villain he's always got something to say and all people always talking shit about him all day if he's if you're young and you grew up like him he's what he might have been born in 2000 i don't know um, Late 1990s. He was, he was born in 90, I would assume 98 or 97. If he, if he's 20, no, if it's he's 2023. 20, so he was oh, born in yeah, like 2000 born in or 1999. Or 99, yeah. yeah, so I'm saying like he's he's a part yeah. of that new generation of this social media thing is consuming them is getting it'll get to him he's seeing everything probably that people are saying and he grew up seeing everything exactly so you know i feel like that does take into account that everybody does need to take that into consideration that he is going through a lot and he is stressed out more than the normal 23 year old and just in general you know what i'm saying so and he has to assert he needs to he probably needs to show his way of asserting his dominance like I, I will get at you, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can't just talk to me any type of way just because I came from a certain type of background. He got his gun, whatever, whatever, to make him feel like he's, you know what I'm saying, he can defend himself. He can, like, y'all not gonna just play with me. You know what I'm saying? And then he's also from, I think he's, I don't know, he's from Memphis or he lived in Memphis. So, you know, all that type, the type of people that's talking crazy to him is probably people that we don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So he might have to flex it. You know, make it seem like he's some something else. So I just feel like Josh probably he's definitely going to change, and I hope he leans more into like the the people that he have around him to help him. You know, stuff like that. Make sure that he stays on track. Um, his team needs to do what they're supposed to do to make sure that he stays on track. And um, he's going to be forgiven. Like what he did is not that big of a deal. We've seen worse worse things done in the NBA um, to these players, and they've gone. So at the end of the day, I hope that he gets help, and I hope that you know, from there, um, his team, his franchise, organization, his family can get gather around him and really just get him the help that he needs, so that he can make better decisions and be a better player. Uh, well, I think as far as being yeah. a better player, I think he's already going to be elevate into becoming a better player. Mm -hmm. I just think it was great for him to take accountability. So him taking that accountability, that's mm -hmm. great, but actually following through with your with your words. Put some action behind those words. And once you put action behind those words and just be more professional, and I don't give a damn what you do after, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. Yeah, don't, we all have our personal don't record lives. yourself yeah. doing that. Because just just know you, because, just know that people are going you know, to be watching and they're going to be judging. Yeah. And that's for and that's for him. Because a lot of times, you know, when you get to a certain status, you think you're, you you think you forget about certain things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're still a certain type of person. You know what I'm saying? So you can't get away from that. You're still a young black man. So you can't hide from that. Like, oh, because I got bread. That doesn't mean anything. As soon as you act a certain way, they're going to categorize you in a certain way. So... As long as he just, you know, keep it off the camera. I don't give a damn what you do at, outside of the camera. Right, because now that image you. is there forever. Like, right. they have an image of you with a gun forever because you put it on there. And now they can, that's that when happens, they can throw out. People put shit and on they there. can label you but more. But you put that on the internet. Now they can label you as a gangster or all, all this nonsense. When you just out here, just you might just be having a little fun. You know what I'm saying? That might have been the only time you did that. But then you decided to record it because you were drunk. Just make better decisions and have more self-control. Shit. That's all I would say. Alrighty. Next topic. Okay, so the next topic is for the next two times. For the next two times, um, there was a video out of him um, where he was seen with a guy that he says that he was in jail with. Um, the man was in there for 10 years, but um, Vanessa was in also incarcerated with him and there were things going on in prison that... Um, he said that the man had took, you know, accountability for that 
Vanessa two times could have possibly did. And so when that man got out, Vanessa gave him some money and it looks like he gave him some, you know, some clothes and some shoes. Um, the man was going back to the halfway house, so he couldn't really get too much of anything because he couldn't, as if you know anything about the halfway house, you cannot take things back there. Um, but so that's the gist of everything that happened. Um, so my question is, is if you take a charge for somebody while you're in jail, um, do you think that that was like a good compensation for him or do you think that, um, he should have got more? Something is better than nothing. Okay. So, um, we don't even know to the extent of their relationship. I mean, he could have took, I mean, he took it, but... Like you said, he was already in there already. So, he believed yeah, in that's what, Finesse. That's but, totally what we were told, what Finesse said. But the thing is... Everybody's if, missing that on the internet. Though. But the, but the thing is, if Finesse would not have got out and been where he is now, would we have expected as much from him? You know what I'm saying? So, if he was to give him what he could give him... And, and, and people tell you all the time. See, y'all never listen. That's my issue with y'all. Y'all always talk, 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 talk. And y'all listen. The thing is, they tell you that these artists do not have as much money as y'all think they have. So, bro, him giving him that is graceful. You know what I'm saying? That's very graceful. Because he could have still said fucking at the end of the day. So, I Right, because he, because technically by street code, you're not supposed to get anything in return if you don't snitch. Like, there's nothing that says... It just says, as a man, you're supposed to take your own charges. And you're supposed to keep everybody else out of that. It doesn't say anything about if you keep your own charges or if you take accountability for something, you should you should get this in return. No, nobody ever said that. That's not part of it. So the fact that he's even getting something is more than a lot of people got. Because what did Bobby get when he got out? Like, the niggas who he took them charges for and then snitch on, he didn't get anything back from that. And like he got he got a uh, welcome from the community he he everybody's his respect is on a different level in new york and everything but to be real money wise everything wise everything bobby got when he got out bobby got on his own because bobby Sturter did you know he 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 did all that stuff he did all the rapping and all that stuff and got his own money got his own connections you know what i'm saying so he didn't really get anything for even taking the charge so it's like what do y'all like nobody gets anything when they when they don't snitch like you just you get your dignity that's all you get so like the fact that he got something is more than a lot of people get so i don't understand that and then i feel like this man if he would have got out like he if he would have got out and didn't know finesse didn't do whatever he did for finesse while he was locked up he would he would have got nothing he if you saw the video that man would have got out with nothing like the fact that he got out and he got all that stuff he looked like he was appreciative and happy for it you know what i'm saying so whatever your view of what you would have thought you would have got or what you would think that you should get doesn't fucking matter the nigga who did it if he's happy with what he got then that's what should we should be worried about why the fuck are we worried about what you should have got oh i would have got this this would have got that blah 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 it doesn't matter because you're not in a situation and that's what y'all don't understand okay. a lot of times y'all never in a situation but always got an opinion on something y'all don't know nothing about but the funny thing is when people get into a situation they say they don't owe nobody shit so if y'all don't owe nobody shit and he gives somebody something then what's the difference the you man know? is happy with what he got. And then so also, who cares? What I would say on that too is, you know, that's an that's a, an investment. So if this exactly. guy doesn't know what to do with that money. It's going to be gone. And he's not, regardless if he got 10 more, 5 more, 30 more. If he don't know how what to do with the money, it's going to be gone anyway. So if he's a true hustler, if he's been in there really thinking about a plan... He gonna make it happen, and then he gonna credit that to that initial investment that he got from 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 um from finesse. And for all we know, finesse could give him some some more on the back end, but just show that so that he won't be too much of a target. You know what I'm saying? He could be doing it's things so much other so, stuff that that we don't know. Like, and then he could be this helping man him is, in different this man ways. Is giving him some on the internet and then sending him back to a halfway house full of scavengers, niggas who I'm don't saying. have a goddamn thing. 
Well, Y'all want that nigga to give him a million and then sit, and that nigga gotta go back into the halfway house for another five months with a whole bunch of niggas who don't got nothing? Are y'all crazy? Do y'all even be thinking when y'all say shit? It be like, damn, us as a black community, a lot of the men in our community are in jail. So a lot of them go through this situation for y'all to act stupid about the repercussions and all that. And you know what I'm saying? It's dumb to me. Like, what don't y'all don't? Y'all don't, y'all act like y'all don't understand what we go through for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of our men aren't going to get anything when they get out. They don't get nothing. Y'all don't do anything for y'all love. Y'all know somebody that's locked up right now. When they get out, y'all not going to give them shit. And they probably know something that you didn't did that was illegal. But they ain't saying nothing to you. But when they get out, they ain't doing shit. They're not going to, you're not going to give them a motherfucking thing. You're not even gonna help the, your loved ones that's locked up right now. So right. it's like, what? Uh, 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 what? Y'all making y'all, an effort to talk to them. Exactly. Y'all don't even. Y'all don't even want to communicate. They can't even pay a little twenty, thirty dollars to talk to them frequently. So y'all got all of these opinions on things. Y'all daddies is locked up and shit. Y'all don't even talk to them. Y'all don't even go see them. Don't, even don't do money. nothing for them. Don't put no money on that commentary. Man. So it's like, what are y'all even talking about? Like, shut. The, just shut up. Sometimes, but, like I just don't. Sometimes I don't. I don't. What I don't like, cause I am an IT person. Me and Steven are IT people. What I don't like about the internet is they gave y'all opinions. Y'all, it gave y'all room to give y'all's opinions on stuff. And, when, and some, some of the stuff y'all be saying is crazy. Like if that man is, if anybody is happy with whatever they get for doing whatever they doing, why are you not happy for them? I'm happy for him cause he happy. I don't ever think people care about. Um facts anymore i think they just go in there just to, just just for just to say something i think they just be like hmm, yeah what can i say I today agree. like i agree with that. i think people, some people i think i've seen a tweet that say that they'd be like i get up and i just and i just tweet whatever that's on my mind oh my god it doesn't have nothing to do with it but you know what guys stop using the internet as your fucking journal <laughs> Go get a real journal. They, God damn. Like, you know, the internet doesn't have to be a journal, okay? We don't want to know everything you're thinking. We don't give a fuck. You know? But, you know, and we need to stop giving a fuck. Because a lot of times, you get fuel to the fire. Because then when you, when you comment on something, or when you repost something, or when you repost with a comment, then you give people fuel to the fire. And, and then they yeah. fueling off of that. And that's one of the big reasons why it was so hard going. for me and Steven to come back onto the podcast Because it's a lot of things that we don't give a fuck about. Like we, we don't. It's like art. When we say a topic, we don't want to. We don't want to put nobody down from our responses. We're just looking at things from our point of view. If we were in that position, what would we do? That's how real we are. We don't like. I don't have to comment on everything that happens. It don't. It, nothing compels me to have to com comment on everything that happens because I have other things going on in my actual real life. But y'all don't know nothing about that. Not really, but you know, just to sum it up, you know, he got something that was better than nothing. Um, he did the he did the time, and you know, there was a payoff at the end for it. He he looked out for him, and like I said, if he really know what to do, he can make it do what he do. And he was happy with what he got for what he did, so we should all be happy for him as a black community. Next, next. Okay, so Sierra and Lori Harvey were um, spotted in a picture together. And, you know, things were being said about, okay, so <laughs> if these two have a similar ex, could you be in the same room or could you be cool with somebody else that you know that mess with somebody that you messed with before? So, Stevie, you can go first. Could you be cool with them? Could be cordial. Mm -hmm. I mean... But you would never want to bring somebody around that, that you know, is attracted to you, to your spouse. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it's a group setting, it's something different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's more controlled. But no, no, nothing personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you could be cordial with the person more, yeah. more likely. So if you had some common event, more so you you at that common event with them, not yeah. so not so much as. You know that person that you was with or if that per you're not even with that person yeah. no more then sometimes it really depends because a lot of times you might not even give a fuck because if you don't give a fuck mm -hmm. if it doesn't even matter to you you like well shit, i'm gonna be cool with this motherfucker because she that motherfucker's in the past so what does it matter so it really it, it's circumstantial it's really circumstantial yeah, but agree. um 
you can be cool with them, you can be cordial with them at the least, and some people might actually befriend, befriend, uh, befriend a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Because they'd be like, well, that past was the past, and uh, sometimes it's an expiration date, you know? How far along was it? You know, if it was more than a year, some people be like, fuck it, you know what I'm saying? If it, if it was, but some people don't get over that, you know? Right, right, right. Depending on you and the person that you are, but me as a person, um, it really, shit, to me, it, it depends on the circumstances and scenario. Most of the people that I that I mess with, after I mess with them, I kind of, anything, I know anything could go. Because if she's messing with me, she's going to, she fuck around messing with somebody that's similar to me. So, that could be similar to me in the activity that they do, or in the look that they have. So, either way, it could be somebody that I know, or with this, with this in, uh, or that a person that is within, like, one or two contacts from me. Right. So, I might not know them directly, but I know them indirectly because of somebody else that they know, that I know. Okay. Um, I can say, like, um, as long as I've been not been in a relationship with the person, me and that person, like, as long as I wasn't in a relationship with the man that you slept with, that I probably dealt with as well, as long as I was never in a relationship with them, I don't give a fuck for real. Like, we can, me and the girl, like, me and the female, if I know that they slept with a dude that I... Like we, I, we can still be cool. Like we can really. So some, sometimes we can be friends. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't give a fuck about that. Like that don't bother me. And I'm not gonna comment on it. I'm not gonna say nothing. If I do something with somebody and he wasn't my man, then I'm not even gonna talk about it because it ain't that really that deep to me. It's not a really good situation that that I care about that deeply. But if it was a guy that <laughs> twice, <laughs> it's like, like now if it's a guy that I was in a relationship with, that's different because the, the dudes that I picked or choose to be in relationships with, we have a different type of, you know, we have history. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm gonna feel some type of way. That's when I'm getting my feelings about it. But if it was a dude who I don't give a damn about, and we probably did something, and I don't remember when the fuck that was. I don't give a damn. Like it's, I, I, and I'm not gonna say nothing about it. I'm never gonna bring it up. I might even deny it. You know what I'm saying? So we, so in my delusion the last night, we didn't mean that man didn't do nothing anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not even tripping. Jinkies. That's why I said if it's a man that I've been in a relationship with, because everybody, people know, not everybody, but the people around me know who I've been in a relationship with. You know what I'm saying? So that's nothing I could do to deny that I was in a relationship with that nigga. But these other niggas. I I don't I didn't do anything with him, so I don't. I'm never going to. I don't have to even say it's not even a reality that I did anything. So you mess with him doesn't even. I don't give a fuck. Cause in reality, in my reality, I didn't fuck with him anyways. So well, I, yeah. one uh, one other thing I would say is uh, a lot of times as people we get excited, you know. Um, I think maybe I don't I don't know maybe women do this too, but I know fellas we do we uh, do this a lot. Well, I don't do this and shit no more, but I, I know sometimes we do this. We we uh, get hyped up by a woman that we that we might be hunting on or potentially hunt on or something, and we could be getting to that point. And you know, be careful who you brag to. You know what I'm saying? Because the person that you brag it to, that motherfucker that you bragging about could be their next victim. So yeah. if you get in oh, your feelings, for sure. if you get in your feelings about for the pussy, for sure, for sure. If you get in your it, feelings it will, about the pussy, women too. That's no, I'm saying. Oh, no, go ahead. That's what yeah. I'm saying, but I agree like, with what you're saying. Like, I can't speak for that because I'm no, not a woman. No, women so, too, for but, sure. Like, but you get around. Right, you know, hey, I didn't see you. Be careful who you. That's what I'm saying. Be careful what you brag about, be, especially if you're getting your emotions crazy. about who you're bragging about. So don't even brag about motherfuckers. That's what I'm saying. For one anymore, but if you are going to. Make sure you ain't your, ain't in your feelings about them, cause the motherfucker you bragging to them about that could be their next victim. So don't be upset because you presented, a lot of times it you presented be. it to them, and a lot of and a lot of times, like I said, a lot of times they wasn't even on their spectrum. They weren't even thinking about that motherfucker, and then you told them how good that power was, and they want a piece. Now they want a piece of that motherfucker. That so goes, be careful. This what he's saying yeah. goes for women and men. I've seen it where we I've been with girls that think. They friends with my friends and my friends have heard about what they doing because they didn't told us about what they doing and my friends that went and did that. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> hey, if we ain't really cool like that, me and you don't, we don't talk on a, um, a, on a consistent, consistent basis. basis. Yeah. Me, 
if your friends, if you think you're friends with somebody and y'all don't talk on a consistent basis, like y'all not really friends like that, like I'm a bitch who who got morals, principles, values, so I'm not gonna. If you tell me about a nigga, I ain't gonna even do that. You know what I'm saying? If I did it before, you told me about him, that's different. But if you told me about a nigga, I'm not even going to be on that. I wouldn't be on a nigga that somebody told me about that they fuck with. I don't give a fuck with friends or not. Every bitch don't have them principles and values that. and morals. I wouldn't even say that. That's all I'm going to say. I, I, I'm not even like, going to go I wouldn't go. I wouldn't do it, but another bitch will. And I'm a not, bitch that you think won't do it will be the bitch that'll do it. But I'm, I'm not even going to go there. Saying. I'll just say perspective is everything. I say this a lot. That perspective is everything. Cause what you take serious, another motherfucker don't. So you might think well, it's serious it. to you. They don't have the same principles and values. I'm well, saying my principles yeah. and values are higher yeah. or anything. I just have different ones than some other people. They don't give a like. They like you. We ain't friends. We don't talk to you. So fuck you. Like you know what I'm saying? Me, I'm like we cool in some type of way. So like I'm not even right, gonna do right, that. Right, or right, right, I don't right, even right. like. I don't want nigga you who want mix, everybody. When you're one of the mix. Yeah, I don't want nigga who want everybody. You know, I'm not gonna even try to go for a nigga who already fuck with that. And some a lot of bitches don't. Some a people want to dip their chip in their care. sauce. They want to dip their chip in their they sauce. They don't you care. Did. So be careful if that if that nigga ain't claim you and you going around saying I don't blood it's my nigga blah blah blah, but he ain't really your nigga. And you and you bragging him with even it. if he your nigga sometimes because your nigga cheat. Didn't seen that before too. Hey, if you you hear me, be cool. I don't talk about. Be you ain't gonna never see me talk to my friends. You ain't gonna never see me talk to no females in general about what me and my nigga got, what my nigga can do, blah, blah, blah. Because they will. You, can't. you never know. You never know. Can't you never know. You never know because. Am I trying to snatch you? It don't even matter if we. You from me. Relationships come and go. Like, they change every day. So you never know. Tell like, you. and that might be in the back of their mind when they heard about yeah. what that person can do. I'm telling you. You never well, know. Next topic. Never know. Wait, what's the next topic, Steve? Wayne. Wayne. Is so, Wayne said that he's the greatest rapper alive. Is that true or not? Yes, I'm going to go first. <laughs> Wayne is the greatest rapper alive. Are you a fan? I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. You know, I'm a track fan more than a rap fan. Well, oh, I'm a rap oh. track fan Ooh. Ooh. over a hip hop fan. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a Kendrick Lamar. I, I got Kendrick Lamar look some stuff. I got some stuff on my playlist for Kendrick Lamar, but I'm more so a Gucci more. Uh, Dolph Moore, you know what I'm saying? Dolph, you know what I'm saying? I'm more of that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but but as far as like hip hop in general and rap, all of that chick of mine, Wayne is the best rapper in life, period. (laughs) It's the numbers. And honestly, um, what separates somebody from being to me the greatest rapper alive and just a good in this your favorite rapper is that we all have agreed at different points in times in their careers that they were the best rapper alive uh, for instance wayne has sold a whole lot of motherfucking records have been number one a lot of times his artists has sold a lot of records and been number one at a time that means the majority of hip-hop fans have all got together and said at a whole lot of times throughout the last 20 years that this nigga is that nigga. He's that nigga. We've all said it because he has outsold everybody else. He has went number one so many times. So if we all have, we all, a majority of hip hop fans have said that this nigga is that nigga, then he is that nigga. Like y'all are saying people who don't sell records is the greatest rapper of all time. That's how is that the case? That's only to you, and that's okay for you to have your opinion, but for something to be a fact, it's got to be a fact to multiple people. It's a fact that we all got to eat food. If we don't eat, we going to die. That's a fact. If a million of us, it's a million hip-hop fans, and a million of us, if there's 10 million hip-hop fans, and 5 million of us, all have, 6 million of us all come to an agreement at this at multiple times throughout the uh, throughout this nigga's career that this nigga's hitting <laughs> this shit that he putting out slaps we have we have said it over and over that this shit is that shit over weeks periods of time once he put his album out for weeks we've said his shit slapped as a group how is he not the greatest rapper of all time <laughs> How is he not the greatest rapper alive? We all said he was together on numerous occasions. Now y'all want to change y'all's mind? It's I can't take y'all seriously. Like 
I feel like the three factors that everybody thinks about, especially when they say Wayne is the greatest rapper, is the stats, um, the lifestyle, and he and lyrically he's 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 up there. You know what I'm saying? So, and I feel like the longevity of his way up career, there lyrically. The longevity of his career has put him, you know, bounds and leaps ahead of some people. You know what I'm saying? So almost everybody, really. Who 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 really doing it like that for that long? Oh, so his so and then I, I say the versatility, Nobody. the versatility that he has. You know what I'm saying? He he he, he went from technically started his rap, hip hop. And then he did rock as well. He was successful in all. I don't. I don't know if he was as successful with the like rock and shit. Cause I don't keep up with those stats and shit as he was with the hip hop and the he, rap. He has pop but, songs and stuff too. With pop right, songs. you're right. And they're popular. Everything. But I'm saying like I'm. I'm not like on the level of his hip hop and his rap. Oh, okay. It's not. You know, cause he did it. Yeah, but we talked about rap. At a later point in his career. Hip-hop. But I'm just saying like I'm saying like how he's transitioned over the years and, then, and still yeah. been relevant. Throughout that time span, so I can understand how influence. everybody say that. You know what I'm saying? Influence. All Culture y'all influence. niggas sound like him. He definitely or a that. version of him, a variation of a nigga who sounded like influence. him. And I, I feel like what a what also put him put him up up there, and like you know, arguably the greatest, if you could say the greatest, is like the mixtape era too. The way he went from the mixtape era and then also killed it in the album era. So that was also what like put him above because not a lot of people can even do that. No. So like his talent wise was just so crazy. And then like you said, the people that came off his branch. That people people say that they're arguably Right. You know, they in everybody's top you know five. They, they right, came you know under him. So and they say sold Nikki so is, many records. Because people say Nikki's <laughs> arguably the greatest female artist. They stay on and the then, And then, hey, some people even argue with you and say Drake is arguably the, exactly. the greatest. Exactly. And it's like, how you, you going to say so, him when another nigga put him on? Right. So I, so, I can agree that Wayne is the greatest or arguably the greatest because of the longevity, the stats that he has. The records he sold, the the like I said, he didn't live the lifestyle that everybody. He, if you want to say the successful uh, artist lifestyle, um, lyrically, you know the 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 mixtapes to show you how lyrically he was going crazy. He had every bad bitch. He would jump on a beat, and then you forget the original song. That's why everything in that, that Wayne could jump on a beat and you forget a, the original song. Not a lot of people can do that because you like, oh, that, he sampled that. That's, he did good, but he sampled that. But when he jumped on that motherfucker and you be like, I want to listen to that. You didn't forgot what the fucking real thing sound like. So, yeah, he's very great, you know, give him his flowers. Like I said, you can say he's the greatest, arguably the greatest. He's, he's at least in the top three. Top two at least. You know, top three, top two. You know what I'm saying? Because um, you can argue over different stuff. But... I'm not one of those about to sit there and argue with you over different stuff. Wayne is great. You know, we want to say greatest rapper alive. Arguably the greatest rapper ever. I don't ever. know not. Who else? I mean, hey. Who so. else? Who else? Y'all are not. Nobody's relevant after 20 years. <laughs> In the game. Like, nobody. Y'all aren't. Y'all have not. Nobody has done that. So, how is that even. Like, nobody has been relevant that long. Like, nobody. Like. Can put out a record right now and just, and all of us will agree that that motherfucker is fire. <laughs> all of us, majority of us, will agree that this fire. Like, no, like we, like I said, we've already all agreed that this nigga and the niggas on his team are the greatest rappers alive because we have bought their music, listened to their music, requesting on the radio stream their music more than any other artists out here so how the fuck are they not it's like that's like that bothers me when i when i hear people talk about who the greatest rappers of lives are because y'all don't even listen to the people that y'all say y'all be like it's it's this person and this person i ain't gonna even say no names but it's like you don't even if i go through your playlist are they on there well then how's that the greatest rapper alive then to you 
Who's on your playlist? Who's on all y'all's playlists if you're a hip hop fan, rap fan, Wayne? And if he's not, you're retarded. <laughs> but he is. He is. When you go to his, when you go to his, like, if you go to his uh, concert as a hip hop fan, rap fan, we're gonna know the words of his songs. All of us. <laughs> so I don't get it. That's confusing to me. How they can argue anything else. Hey man, perspective is everything. I'll still say that. <sighs> All right, next topic. So the census um, did a study that said that I believe in 2000, since 2020, um, that more kids were being, more black kids were being homeschooled um, in the United States. And um, so my question was, what do you think the contributing factors to that are? Um, and well, I can, I can go. I'll say um, one might be the dissatisfaction with with the education system. Two could be a contribution to the woke movement, you know, because um, everybody you know wanted to learn more. But some people actually did learn, start actually learning more about us and ourselves, and not just our slave history, but for slave history. So they kind of just want to teach their children like the whole history, you know, and just teach them. Just not what they get in the classroom, you know. Outside, outside of that, what what other things uh, black people did that were great, um, and just also just just outside of just being um, the black topic, and just certain uh, subjects. Some people want to teach their children um, how how to you know learn in in, in a greater way. Mm -hmm. And then I also think it's also uh, the rise of entrepreneurship because after the pandemic, there were more entrepreneurs. There were more millionaires as well, um, in the sense, the sense is, uh, I don't know what the stats are, but there were actually more millionaires. So I think more people had time to actually homeschool their kids because if you think about it, a lot of times people can't homeschool their kids because they don't have the time to homeschool their kids. So with it being more millionaires and more hundred thousandaires, I think more people just actually had the time to actually school their kids and teach them what they wanted to teach them. Because um, with the with the high dissatisfaction in the in the um, in the education system, people just started thinking like, "Can I educate my children?" And then they probably just started to to do research since they had the time since we all were in the house. Mm -hmm. So I think it uh, was a contribution to the COVID, you know, maybe the woke era, and then just the dissatisfaction with the education system all in general. So yeah, I think that um, just based off of what's been going on um, with COVID, like. COVID taught black parents that they didn't need, um, their kids weren't, okay, I'll say, COVID taught black parents that their kids weren't, you know, autistic, as autistic as they thought they were, they didn't right. need um, remedial classes and stuff like that. It taught them that having to teach their kids at home, taught them that their kids necessarily were, weren't having issues with understanding and grasping the knowledge it was the way that the, the taught, that yeah, they were being yeah, taught yeah. and so like the kids can learn and they can really grasp what's going on if they get more breaks if they like because kids can't sit down for that long and then these teachers are expecting them to sit down for a long time and then really like um not all teachers because i know there's some teachers out there who don't do that and i don't want to say that for all teachers because i have teacher friends um but I will say, uh, like teachers, if they if the kid can't sit down for a long period of time, then they're jittery and they're anxious and stuff like that. And they'll try to put them in one of those those different type of alternative classes. And parents have saw that, like, yeah, my parent, my kid doesn't <laughs> need to be in an alternative class. They just need to be taught differently. They need to be they need to be given a little bit more attention, maybe than some other people. They need to they need to get more patience. They need to stop being overstimulated. Stimulated. Some of some of that stuff in the classroom is overstimulating them. Um, kids are other kids are a distraction to their learning environment. Yes, they do need other kids for their um, inner. Um, interpersonal relationships and things like that building but as far as like trying to learn and stuff like that and seeing other kids do it faster and all that was not helping them as well so I feel like um, parents were seeing like I, I can if you give me the, the the stuff to teach my kids and they can do all this stuff at home they don't need to be at school and my kid don't have to be <laughs> 
categorized as a kid who needs to be in a dis disability class or or a class that or a slow class or you know they don't need to ride the yellow bus and all that stuff no they just need a little bit more um time they need to be taught differently and stuff like that so black parents are sounds like they're taking control of their kids life and the opposite of what people think and if you look at the statistics and i will say indiana because that's where i look at mostly because that's what i'm doing with star black or um, non for profit um a lot of the reading in the math levels for our, the black kids are extremely low and those are the kids that were in school and learning in school and stuff like that and then it, it went lower um during covid because of a whole lot of different contributing factors you know but it's more so showing parents that you know them being in school haven't been hasn't been helping them, their kids you know what i'm saying and they've been seeing how these teachers are talking and communicating with their kids and they're not liking it i've talked to parents about that the way that the teacher talks to their kid and stuff like that and you know that's something that they don't like you know what i'm saying just because of anything you know so that's discouraging to the kid too so i think that black parents are taking taking things to their own hands trying to find other ways to teach their kids and that's something that's um if you are looking at opportunities to help in education and things like that something that you should look at like um helping black kids um with education and things like that reading and all of that because at the end of the day that's going to take our that's that's the basis to to take in our black you know culture to a different level it definitely starts with our kids i know that's cliche to say but this is the truth like once we can get them the help that they need and get them um learning the way that they need to then we'll be better as a community we'll have more people who can learn analyze and make decisions and uh um to piggyback off the child thing i think that they also is with the with the media and with more people being on the media now it's they see the effects of the lack of attention that mm -hmm. that that is being paid to the younger generations and how that can affect certain things certain aspects of life so i do believe that that contributed as well like you said just them paying attention more and they're like well if we pay attention more now the these young youngsters are the future because um the youngsters that are that are becoming the future they're not mm -hmm. currently the present but they're becoming the future the ones right after mm -hmm. us basically they saw them they're like wait a minute like kind of like that 14 to 15 to 14 to like i would say 19 maybe even 20 range they were like whoa because some of them they're kind of out of pocket like some of those people who like some of those children who are like in middle school mm -hmm. to, to high school and so like right after that like graduation like a year or two removed from from high school they kind of you know they kind of out of pocket and then the parents are viewing that and now i, I do feel like more parents do want to make a change and like you said now they're paying attention to their children because they see that wait wait a minute we yeah, had to pay more had attention to, they to had these to kids. COVID. they had to yeah, they, COVID. Had, to they had more to, attention they had to teach them at home so now they were seeing what was happening in the classroom in their homes and they just was like no Right, this is really This good. is why my kid isn't doing good at school. Right. Because, because it's general base. It's not, you know, and then they Yeah, like I can do this at home and that's better. Know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, so I completely it's, understand. Yeah, it's positive. It's great, you know. I, I um more power to the people. For sure. <laughs> So the next topic is Michael B. Jordan. So Michael B. Jordan was on um yeah. I believe he was like he was on his premiere for Creed 3, right? Where he where he was talking to um Gloria, which is was an interviewer, and she was about to interview him and ask him questions and he said, Oh, you call me aren't you the one who called me Corny? Corny. And like, was it middle school? Did you call me Corny in middle school? school? And you call me Corny? Oh. And it's like so my so my question is, um, a lot of people, is, there's mixed reviews on that. Like, hey, he sh uh, like that's you know, look at where he is, look at where she is, and all this extra stuff. And you know, um, she was a bully and all that. So my question is, what are your, what is your view on that situation? And do you think that he was, do you think that she was, he was corny for bringing it up, or you know, how would you have handled? 
Now, I do believe a lot of times that people be salty. What? And they take that, and they take that, no. and they take that salt. And they take that salt and carry it. You know, like that chip on their shoulder. Eat that motherfucker. It ain't that deep. You hear me? Because if you, if you remember that, you might have been corny. Like, everybody not that dude throughout their whole life. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? You just took the steps to be where you needed to be. And, and Newark, New Jersey. As and Newark, I can't say, like, and, and I'm saying, bro. That's awesome. That video that came out, <laughs> that video that came out with him, and I don't know if it was a commercial or it was oh, Lord. something for a movie or whatever. That video with, the, with the With the white lady. Yeah. It looked like a video. Was it looked like a music video. I don't, I don't know, know what the hell that was. I don't know what that was. That shit was corny. Okay. I'm not gonna necessarily say Michael B is corny in general, but that motherfucking thing, that video that was going around, y'all got him. That was corny ass shit. You got it. So he probably done done some corny ass shit before. Mm -hmm. Um, but him for him to address that, I'm surprised he didn't remember that because I don't remember no shit from from middle school. So that stood with him. So you don't remember none of stuff you got bullied about? I don't think. No, I didn't get bullied. For real. We just used to talk shit back in the day. Yeah, you, know, you ain't got nothing you know. that you, people used to talk shit to you about. Did anybody used to talk about your last name? I mean, I wouldn't be considered that bullying. I know. I know. Well, well nowadays it's different. Because now, because back then, what we consider bullying, and nowadays that what we consider be, well, bullying. Well, that's what he's considered bullying. Right. So he considered that. Well, I guess <laughs> technically to those standards, yeah, people did used to talk about our last name. Um... You know, people talk about your, your physical appearance um, and shit like that. Yeah. Um, and then I had a gap. Some people used to talk about my gap. Oh my god. Um, I don't know. I don't have, I the, straight, I don't have the straight. I don't have the straightest teeth. Some I people mean. used to talk about my teeth. I don't have the straightest teeth, but I mean. I mean, yeah. that I mean, guys used to talk about how big my boobs was when I was younger, but it was right. like because y'all yeah. liked me, y'all y'all was just attracted to it. You know, right. I knew back then it was because hormones was raging and they were looking. Right, I mean, so, they, <laughs> so, so it was different. My shit. last name, of course. You know. Right, throughout the times, it was different stuff. Yeah. But it was nothing that I would be like, "Why you, when you the motherfucker you that was talking about my dad? About when my you, last name? When you say, did you say about cops? When you compare it to a dick or something? I ain't about to. I don't. I don't, I don't remember who said it. I, I can't either. tell you who said it. You know, I can't tell you who was talking about my gap. I can't tell you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times I got more compliments than I got. People talking about me, you know, and sometimes when a person was talking about me, um, or something like that in high in high school, middle school, because we used to jump, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing we used to do. So if you yeah. couldn't, if you couldn't jump back back in the day, you better not say shit. I mean, I feel like you in high school, me? like um, when I was dating a certain person, people used to say like little stuff like why and her and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of do remember the host people who those people were, but I mean, all them, all them, all them, all them, right. them, yeah, true. All them motherfuckers is doing bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they're broke. So, so, so I'm not so really like, every time I, I do remember, I do remember, but they all doing bad and they're broke and I've seen them and I didn't have nothing to say because at the end of the day, you want? you're, you're not, you're doing you're bad. Like you you're doing bad. So if I would have seen her on. So if one of them hoes interviewed you. And you was on a and you was on a red I carpet. Would you, no would you would have been like, like would you be like Ain't you that bitch? No, I'm like, no. I wouldn't give a fuck. You're at my okay. movie premiere interviewing me for a something that I directed. Like whatever you said, I don't give a fuck. Plus, to me, what they were saying is way worse than what he was saying. Right. I mean what she said right. was that corny. he was corny, like and he is a corny nigga to me. <laughs> she believes you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of things. You know, why he corny, bro? Tell me why. why he he just corn. You know? Is it because of the the relationship that didn't? How he went about that or what? Nah, what like I just think that some dudes are corny, just bro? corny. Like they're not. Uh, they're not. You, the energy he give off. Yeah, they're not like they're not like a suave, lot. Cool. They're not suave. They're not suave. They're not, suave, they're not like um. I don't know. They just give off the vibe that you know they're vanilla. You know, they're bland. I won't say corny. I said they're bland. You know, corn don't have no taste. It don't got no flavor. Ain't got no, you know, unless you put some salt and pepper on it, they ain't got no seasoning. So it's just like a bland individual. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Just like a bland, like a white piece of paper. You know, it's just bland. So I feel like that's what it was trying to say. You know what I'm saying? A person who don't got no flavor, don't got no, 
you know, don't got no seasoning. Back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, you might not have no flavor. No, no. Maybe not. You know what I'm saying? I'm women like them now, so you right. flavored up to them. So at the end of the day, like, why do you even feel the type of way about somebody calling you corny? And it's like, like, um, for you to. She is a black woman on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know for they white women. And they have done you type some type type dirty. You know what I'm saying? And you don't be saying nothing to them. You don't be bringing that to the forefront. And I know Joe Bunn has said that. And I definitely agree with that. Like just basically I'm saying what he said. Like you know. Like, like you picked her to do that? <laughs> you could pour it to the side like damn you call me horny. Yeah, be like, you was a court, you call me court like, That's bro. middle school, like, bro. bro. I don't know. I, guess, I don't I don't know. Like whoever says corny. people said stuff about me in middle school. Like, I don't remember who said nothing about me in middle school. I don't remember that far. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, then the girls who was saying things about me when I was in high school, they're not doing good. So I wouldn't really care to address it. So, so that's my opinion. So the end of the discussion is I believe he's done done some corny shit. Yeah. But I don't believe that he's really a corny individual. What does corny mean to you then? Um, corny. I don't know. Like corny, like you don't even know. I mean, I know, but I'm saying like I wouldn't categorize him as corny. Who's corny? I mean, obviously he got some pizzazz to him. Women like him. It's some women that like looks. him. Right. I mean, he's a corny he nigga. Is. I mean, I know. I, what you and, think? And I can't is? say. Okay, let's that go back. Let's go into him. our next topic then. Chris Rock is he corny? For that statement, yes. <laughs> anyway, no, actually, no, no, no. Actually, you know what? Let's go into Chris, Chris Rock, Rock. Is corny. Let's let's go into Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Let's go into Chris Rock. Chris Rock. So is Chris corny. Rock. So Chris Rock, of course, got slammed by Will Smith at the Oscars when he when he was. I think he was. What he um oh, hosting? He was host. Yeah, so we got flat. Okay, it's been a year <laughs> since it's been a year since then. Now Chris Rock is on tour talking about how much of how much of a bitch ass nigga Will Smith is and how Will Smith everybody you you dated um your you dated your sons or your kids friend. Well, Jada dated yeah. your kids friend. Talked about it. Talked about it to your face, you. interviewed you. You a bitch ass nigga for that. So you gonna try to fight me and, and them, even and though said, you know I you know I can you can beat my you can beat my motherfucking ass. All them niggas that called you. All them the other niggas who called you a bitch. And you you ain't gonna do nothing to them. I will say this that it was funny that Will laughed and then looked at Jada's face and got serious. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't a it wasn't a it wasn't a laugh like that it was an uncomfortable laugh you know what I'm saying like if you watch the video it wasn't him just la like no it wasn't it wasn't authentic it wasn't, authentic. It wasn't no authentic. it wasn't it wasn't it was just because the cameras was on them when that shit happened so they was trying he was trying to be cordial Brush it off. just like he said he does he does he has to do that a lot. Because if he's in the industry and he doesn't want to ruffle no feathers. Yeah, he's trying to brush it off. Yeah, he's and then he it. saw his wife's face and then got mad. Yeah, that's exactly what he said happening for sure. He was trying to be cordial with the shit. But motherfuckers you know, was going too far. His wife got mad and he got slapped. I'll say this. At least he wait, waited to respond until he got paid for it. He was going to do that anyway. You know, so, but the, the thing is, it's like your brother didn't talk about it. You know, other comedians and talk about it. I kind of thought it was a deadly situation. I thought it was point, over, like. But then he he made it resurface it. And then he so, said one thing he did say that caught me off guard was, "You don't fight in front of white people, sir." It's a lot of things that it is a lot of things that you don't do in front of white people that you didn't did in front of white people. You didn't let white people call you a nigga, girl. You didn't let, you didn't did a lot of, you have talked bad, dirty about black people in front of white people because the majority of your audience is white. <laughs> Everything you do is in front of a white audience. So for you to say, you don't do this in front of white people, sir, like, it's, I would, I would, well, I would rather is, slap a nigga in front of a white person than let a white person call me a nigga. But the thing on is, camera. is, why would you even make that statement? Let's you know what I'm saying? That statement to say is a lot of things you don't do in front of white people. Why would that even be something that you say? No, and you're in front of white people when you're doing that. 
But I do feel like a lot of his stand up is him. like Cool. A of, yeah, a lot of shit that he does is corny. Cool that's corny. I guess that's what be that's corny. Steven's definition that's of corny, corny would be. Yeah, because like, I'll be right trying to, I'll be right. That's corny. Sure. Because I'll be trying to for get sure, witty, sure, sure. but some of the shit, it's like he cool. Because I, I give a lot of black men the benefit of the doubt just because y'all, I see y'all as brothers, uncles, and shit like that, you know, cousins and shit. But it's like, he definitely tap dances a lot. So I can't get out of that. I don't care what nobody else thinks. He definitely one of them that tap dances a lot and puts on the show. And I was supposed to be good for the boss, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what it did. And that's basically what the fuck he was saying. You don't do that in front of the boss. You smack me somewhere where, where the boss is. But you gonna talk shit about my black ass wife? In front of the white people? After we was already doing what we was doing. All that we was already going through what we was going exactly. through. Just leave that one alone. Okay? Like, leave that one alone. And we already don't like each other. You know we don't like each other. So, I might just want to slap you just because, hmm, he laughed. And your, and he your, kind of fake laughed. Knowing your laughed. brother who really probably would have ran right. up on Will ain't even here no more to protect you. Oh, you not here? No. Yes. But he, that's he, a real nigga. No, he real. Cause that's he, a real Because he spoke on it. Because he spoke on it. And then he was like, motherfucker, motherfucker, do that to me, motherfucker, you feel me? So he spoke on it shortly after. But for you to speak on it a year after, it's like, come on, bro. Like, just for the bread. Okay, you did it for the bread. All right. But you know, in reality. You're doing that shit for the white people. Just like he said, don't do this something for the white people. You're doing it. You tell so. us. You tap this. When are opinion, we gonna when are we gonna this. be consistent with our opinions here? I'm saying you talk this, you talk that, you flipping, you flapping You me. if you watch the old podcast with that Will Smith, I completely was on Will Smith's side. Um I'm all about protecting black women if that means slapping a motherfucker in the mouth. In the national television, huh? That is his black wife and if he if you talking shit about her, I don't give a fuck where you at. You need to protect her. Smack his ass in the mouth. I don't give a damn. <laughs> And then the way he talking about, talk about he calling him a bitch ass nigga in front of everybody, in front of these all these white people, but he can't smack your way in the fucking mouth in front of these white people. Are you crazy? You are good enough. After you didn't thought about it over a year, you still called him a bitch ass nigga in front of a whole bunch of white people, and said, "I'm I'm ho I'm damn near a hoe." You you saw that I was a, how much a hoe I was, and you still came with me, smack me in the mouth. Like, that's wild. Like, why would you say that? Like, that's, that is corny. Okay. Nah, yeah, he's, I will say that is nah, corny. Also like, corny anybody shit. who, like, be also corny shit. I'm, 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 I'm a weak ass nigga. Why would you hit me over everybody else? That's wild to me. Hey, but he was Because everybody thought she, because everybody was saying, the truth, they thought she didn't hit him back because you was on national TV. No, you just knew that you wasn't, you was going to be trying to be. And, That's even worse. And because <laughs> he was on national television and he wanted to keep the check. So, I mean, he does a lot of corny things. Um, he got some cool comedy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some of it. But, yeah. So, that was kind of some corny shit the way that he went about it a year later and then calling him a bitch ass nigga. I'm like, okay, bro. You ain't even had to say all that. Like, What's the point? Oh, to get a buzz in the media. Oh, I forgot. You do things like that purposely. Okay. In front of whites. Right. But I'm not checking out your Netflix series. I'm never. You I'm ain't got to worry about I'm, that. I've never. I'm not a comedian, so I don't have that drive to want to listen to Chris Rock just because he's Chris Rock and I want to kiss no. a comedian's ass. You know? Mm -hmm. That's what comedians do. Like, they're like, you said Chris Rock ain't funny? Like, y'all comedians, so y'all looking at comedy a different way, way than totally what the different. fuck I'm looking at. Yeah. I'm looking at that shit only to fucking laugh. And if I'm not going to laugh at the shit, I'm not watching the shit. I already know I'm not going to laugh. I already, already watched this shit before. So, I'm not watching it again. And I'm definitely not finna watch no black man tell a whole bunch of white people that I'm a whole ass nigga and, and why this black man hit me and, and knowing I can't be his ass. Like, I would never want to look at somebody put their self down in that way in front of white people. I would never watch that. Yeah, so. So, yeah. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. The Thank you guys. Like, share, subscribe. 
share, share, share. Like, like, hey, like, God, comment. I have a purpose for you. Be great. This is this Yeah, Matt. Uh, it's Matt. It's my boy Matt. My nigga Matt. It's his, it's his brand. I almost, I have my, 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 I was trying to wear the polo. The polo didn't come in yet, but, you know, copy some Be Great. You dig? Yeah. And thank you guys for listening to the podcast. We'll be back with, you know, with another episode in two weeks. Be looking forward. Thank y'all again for coming.